Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're going to be working on a project over here, installing a digital readout on my Kearney Tracker 2D rotary head building machine. Now, I've had this machine for about a year now, and I honestly haven't used it because I haven't had a digital readout on it. And it's just not very easy to use a milling machine, in my opinion, without a digital readout on it. Can you do it without it? Absolutely. This machine was designed to use without a digital readout. It actually has mechanisms in here for doing very precision measurements using uh, standard rods and it's got dial indicators in here to measure movements, but it's just not as convenient and easy to do as just dialing it in using a digital readout. So I've decided to go ahead and get this thing installed on here, get one installed so that I can really start utilizing this machine a little bit more easily in my shop. Now, what I opted to go with was a digital readout made by DroPros and I have two other digital readouts uh, that I'm using from this company. I've had very good success with them. Um, been very happy with the other ones I've got. So I've got one on my um, Wales Index, just regular uh, milling machine, knee mill, and then I've got our um, vertical mill. And then I've also got a DroPros digital readout over on my Monarch metal lathe. And we're gonna be putting one on this one as well. Now, I did decide to go with a little bit different model DRO than the ones I've been using before. So the ones I've had before are just strictly reading out. That's all they do is they just give you a digital readout. Uh, on my uh, Wells Index milling machine, it reads the X, Y, and Z axis. This one will do the same thing. It'll have the X, Y, and Z, but this particular model, this is the EL750, and it actually has an LCD screen in here so that when you're doing some of the more advanced functions, it'll actually show you a map of where you are and kind of has some advanced features rather than just reading numbers. You can visually see some things going on. Haven't ever used one of these before. Uh, the other ones are the, uh, the older type styles, which they still offer and sell, but again, I opted to go with this one here. So I'm, I'm kind of anxious and, and uh, excited to get this one installed and going on here. So over here on the mill are all the parts and pieces that came with this kit. I've already unboxed it all. It came uh, very well packaged and everything. And I think we'll zoom in and kind of show you the components that we're gonna be installing. And I've done a couple of these installs before. It takes time, but it's not too difficult to do. So let me show you what we got. Of course, we got the actual display up here. Again, this is the EL750 uh, that we'll be actually interfacing with. These are the magnetic scales that we have to mount to the machine itself. This is what we're actually gonna be reading on. Uh, a lot of your older DROs that were made had glass scales on them. These are a little bit more modern technology with the, the magnetic scales. Uh, they're a little bit less hassle-free. They're easier to install. They're not as fragile to deal with. Uh, you basically just mount this on something and there's a reed head right here that will just kind of fit on here. And then as this slides back and forth on that head, it reads in very precise, I think this one's five microns, um, is what the resolution is on these. Uh, so very precise measurements it can read off of them. The cool thing about these magnetic scales is, is that you can cut them to whatever length they need to be. So they send you standard lengths, but if you know that is too long or you need to shorten it, no problem, you just take it to a saw cut it off however long you need, you're good to go. With the glass scales, it's a little more difficult to, uh, to cut them to custom lengths. And they make these uh, extremely long lengths that you can get. Uh, in fact, the, I ended up having a, for this particular mill, because uh, the, I don't have as much movement in it as a regular uh, milling machine does, they actually put together a set of scales that fit this a little bit better, so I'm not wasting uh, my long axis on here. Uh, this table doesn't move as far. So I got, I think I got two 18s and a 12, uh, which is all we need for this machine. And if you need longer ones or shorter ones, uh, they can fix you right up over there. Uh, got some mounting hardware and stuff down here. We'll be using some of this. In my experience, these little hardware mounting kits are very useful, but uh, sometimes depending on the machine that you're going to, you may actually have to fabricate something to get the scales to mount properly and the reed heads to mount properly but usually these are a good start and kind of give you a good place to go. So uh, we'll be using some of that and got some instructions, some documentation, and everything else that goes with it. So anyway, nice little setup. Let's uh, go ahead and see if we can start getting this thing set up. I will point out that on this machine, it did have ways to measure 
uh, distances. And if you look, there's two scales. There's one here and one here, and there's a little V-way in here. And we have dialed indicators on here. These are actually uh, precision dialed indicators that read in 10 thousandths of an inch. And what you would do is you would use these standards like this right here. This is a standard. This one here is uh, six inches long. You would put that down in there. And uh, there's a stop up here on the end that would bump up against these. And they had these in different lengths. One of them has actually got a micrometer head on there so you can dial in to a 10 thousandth a particular length and you would just stack these in here and whatever you needed to and you could make them a, a movement, a measurement movement. But there was a lot of moving parts or a lot of manual stuff going on here. A digital readouts is gonna be much better, quicker, easier solution to this. I'm gonna leave all this stuff intact so that if I ever did want to use it for some reason, I have that option, but um, Anyway, we're going to go with the, the modern method here, which is using the digital readout. Now, I've got to get scales mounted on here. And uh, for the bottom down here, I'm going to mount a scale just right here on this scale. We're just going to mount it right here to it, and that's going to be my mounting point. This is a, the longer one, but still, we're just going to mount it right down here. And I've just got a piece of uh, iron that I'm going to mount on here, a quarter or inch and a, I think it's inch and a half by quarter inch thick. We're going to mount that on there and then this will mount directly to that and that will basically we'll just use these two existing scales to kind of mount our magnetic scales on that's my game plan so i'm going to get set up for that we're going to get our piece of metal mounted on here and then we will mount the scales to those i think we're ready to put our first uh, scale on here and i was originally going to mount it up on this up here and uh, I was gonna put this backer plate behind it and mount it up on the scale, but I got to looking and uh, this was gonna be in the way. It was gonna hit this uh, coolant tube uh, when I lowered the table down. So what I ended up doing was I just made some brackets. I bolted them to the backside of this uh, piece here and I hung that piece on below it. And now I can come in here and just mount my magnetic scale directly to this bar that I've got on here. Wasn't a big deal to have to do it, just a little bit of fabrication work there. Cutting a couple of pieces and drilling a couple of, tapping a couple of holes, went together pretty easily. Now, one thing I'll note here is uh, with these scales, uh, you got adjustment up and down on them so we can get them lined up. And there's also these little grub screws in here that you can move it in and out. To, so if, if, even if it's out of alignment a little bit this way, when we start adjusting things, we can move these things in and out to make it fit. So for right now, I'm just going to kind of just tighten it up. And when we start putting the reed head on, we can adjust these so that they fit just right. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. There we go. And that scale, pretty happy with how that one turned out. It's out of the way. Shouldn't be a problem. Now we need to make a bracket or see if I got a, something in my kit that where I can mount the reed head down here on this. And I think we'll be ready to roll. Well, I lost a little audio here again, so we're gonna voice over this little segment here, but this shows the bracket that we mounted in here. Basically just got it hanging down from the side there and a little piece of angle iron in there and the reed head is mounted up underneath it. And that will allow that reed head to uh, slide back and forth on the scale before. So in this case, the scale stays stationary and the reed head will move in and out with the table as it moves in and out and that will give us our measurements that we need uh, for the digital readout to see how far that, that table has moved. I've got some adjustments in there. I put some slots in it where I can adjust it up and down and as far as the in and out we can make those adjustments into the, uh, the scale down below with the grub screws and uh, we can also adjust the scale up and down to get it in alignment with everything and I will be making those adjustments a little bit later on, but uh, here it is installed. So for the scale that's gonna go on the front here, uh, we're gonna mount it directly to this 
scale here. We got room. I don't think there's going to be an issue on this one. So what I've done is I've drilled and tapped three holes into the front of this. And again, I've got a piece of flat bar that I have made some, made that's going to mount up on this. So I've got three countersunk holes for a quarter 20 screw to go into. One thing I'll note is that on the, on this, where this goes in, each one of these screws stands proud a little bit. So I actually went over to my milling machine and with just an end mill, I made a little pocket for each one of them. It's a little bit oversized, but now those kind of fit right over those bolt holes and that will allow that to mount flush up on there. So I'm just going to take some uh, uh, flathead screws here and we'll fit up in these countersunk uh, holes where everything will be flush across the front. Get this first one started in the middle. All right, so now I've got my bar to mount this on, mounted on here. Go ahead and tighten all three of these up real good. And I've also got this drilled and tapped with the uh, holes that mount the screw to it. I mean, or the uh, scale to it. Let me get that, we'll get the scale mounted. Now, one thing I'm gonna play attention to here is I want the uh, reed head to mount on here where the uh, cable is coming off to the left. If you look at these little, got these little marks on here, there's only on one side. And if you look on the scale, you've also got marks right there. These have to be oriented in the right place. So the scale needs to go on with those going up right there. If it was upside down, I would just flip the scale over, but they only work in one direction. So we will come in here and put these screws in. We got some adjustment here that we can put in this scale up and down to get it lined up right. And I'm just going to, I'm not even going to tighten it up yet until we get the uh, reed head mounted. But there we go. That front scale is installed. Now we need to uh, put a bracket over here to uh, mount the actual reed head on. And uh, I think we'll have this one done. So I'm about ready to mount the scale here. What we've done is um, this angle bracket was part of the kit. I did cut off part of it because it actually was for something else, but it had the holes mounted in it for mounting a scale. And we've got this on here. I got the slots where I can adjust it up and down. And I just made a little block to go in here behind that to go over to the machine, a little offset. And we drilled and tapped a couple of holes in there to mount this on. So. Let's see how this goes. We will uh, get our first hole kind of started here and I'll kind of get this lined up roughly. And my other screw right here. This one will mount over here. Here we go. And I think that'll do it. We will uh, run that down and back just to make sure that uh, everything's lined up right. It needs to, it's a little bit crooked. Look at that now. I think that's pretty good right there. Tighten her up. All right, that's got that scale mounted. Now we need to do the Z-axis.
And the Z axis here is mounted now. We got this over on the table. It's gonna be moving up and down, measuring the height there. And basically what I was able to do was mount this scale on the back side of the table here. It's kind of tucked in back here where it's nice and protected. Uh, I basically just took this, this whole piece sandwiches onto the table right here. I was able to take that off, take it over to my drill press, drill and tap two holes in there, put the scale in. And then we modified a bracket here that was in there. I had to cut one of the little adjusting legs off because it was running into this, but I had a nice machine surface there to mount that onto. And uh, that scale is there. The scale will go up and down. The, the reed head will stay stationary uh, on this one here. And but we got that one mounted and ready to go. And with that, we got all three scales mounted. And next we need to get the uh, controller or the, the reed head, whatever you want to call it, the the actual display mounted to the machine, get everything hooked up, try it out. Let's, uh, let's do that. So I've got my display now mounted over here to the machine. We just put a bracket here on the side. It's got a little arm, all this hardware kit, mounting kit came with it. And it's mounted up here where we can see what's going on. And good news is, is right out of the box, I plugged in my cables coming into the back and I've got to get these tidied up. They're not going to be like that permanently, but I'm just kind of checking things out right now. But uh, right now my X, Y, and Z are all zeroed out. When I come over here and uh, move my X axis, as you can see, it uh, seems to be reading. Y axis, same thing, reading. And my Z axis, which is the knee going up and down, seems to be reading. So um, I do need to come in here and just do a calibration check on all these axes. There is a way that you can calibrate it. I can tell you on the other two DROs that I've got from DroPros, haven't had to do any calibration. It was right good out of the box, but it's good to go ahead and confirm that while you're in there. And if you do need to recalibrate, uh, you can do that. There's an operation, the instructions are in the manual on how to do it. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna trust it. Gonna, gonna verify, but it should be right. Uh, let me zoom in here and kind of show you some of the functions on this, because it's pretty cool. So on this particular model, what we have is an LCD monitor in there, LCD screen, uh, liquid crystal display. Uh, it's this touch screen out here. This isn't up here in here, but you got all your buttons are just touch screen on here. And let's just say that I want to re-zero everything out. Uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, we just go in here, hit the zero, and go over here, select our axis, enter, and we're all zeroed out. Uh, and of course, just like any DRO, it will keep track of your coordinates off of wherever you zero off of. Uh, you can switch, right now I have it in inch mode. Uh, you can very quickly just switch over to millimeter mode. Now when I'm moving, I'm moving in millimeters. And if I wanna go back to inches here, it will just flip between the two. So that's a nice feature. Again, I pretty much am gonna be running in um, inch mode for most everything that I do. So the half function, we're just gonna run this over. I don't know, something like that. I'm gonna come in here and hit the half function. And then I'm gonna say select axis for the half. I'm gonna select this one and it divides that in half. So now I can uh, take that back to zero. It's gonna start beeping when I get close to the, my number there and we're two tenths off. It'll take a little while to get that zeroed out exactly. But anyway, you can see I can very easily find halfway between two points, which is a nice feature to have. Let's do a bolt hole pattern because that's something we did on the other DRO very recently. I'm gonna go into the function mode and it's got all kinds of functions in here, bolt hole, line hole, grid, frame, air, arc contouring, R function, pocket. Uh, there's instructions on how to do all these different things. I'm not gonna go over all of them. Uh, but, you know, the line hole, I think, is if you want to drill holes along a line, it'll, it'll help you calculate your spacings and find that out. A grid is if you want to lay out a grid, uh, like a two inch by two inch grid. You can even put it on an angle or whatever, and it will drive you to all those points. Not sure what frame is, arc contouring. Arc contouring is if you want to kind of like a CNC machine where you're doing an arc, it will actually give you X, Y coordinates to inch around and, and actually put an arc in there. Uh, I have used that function on my other DRO a time or two. It doesn't give you a perfectly smooth arc, but 
you can uh, you can get pretty good uh, with that. It's actually actually neat. So anyway, we're going to go into the bolt hole function. So I'm going to hit enter. Or here we go. Hit that button. First thing it's going to do is tell you where you want your zero to be. So you can put in if you want to offset. I'm just going to say we're on the zero zero that we want to go. Uh, we're going to put in our circle radius. I'm just going to put in three inches. Uh, starting angle, this is if you want to change the angle of where that starts. I'm just going to go with, a, you know, zero degrees. Uh, number of holes, I'm just going to say eight holes. I'm going to say enter. If you want to do the depth based on your z-axis, um, you can put all that in there too. We're just going to get, jump right in here though. What's nice is, is you look here, it will actually give you a visual representation of your bolt hole circle. Whereas before you just had coordinates to drive to it. It says we need to go over three inches to go to the first coordinate. So I'm just going to start wheeling my milling machine over. And if you look, it's telling me, number one, I'm going in the wrong direction. I think I got my axis backwards. I need to change that, but no big deal. Um, we're going to go over. You can see where the red dot is. And you can see where you're at in relationship. And when you get close, you can look up there. We just want to go to zero, zero. So we're just going to take that down to zero. There we go. So they were ready to go on our first hole. When you're ready to go to your second one, uh, I think you hit jump, enter hole number. We're just going to say hole number two. Enter, and it tells us we need to go up there. So again, we can drive over to where we need to go to. I'm just gonna go right there for right now. And my other axis. Get the point. We can just drive to all those points. So really nice to have that visual representation of where you're at and where you're going to. Um, really good to have. So there you go. That's just a real quick, basic introduction to this. Uh, I'm going to get out of the bolt hole and just take me back to a regular uh, grid, our regular numbers here. But the nice thing is, is when you get into some of the advanced features, again, it'll show you a map of where you're at and where you're going so you can uh, more easily see where you're at. So anyway, this is the uh, E750, I think. There we go, the EL750. Pretty happy with it so far. Uh, we're going to be putting this to use here very shortly, so uh, you'll be seeing more on this. Uh, I will note, too, that it has a USB port on the back where you can update the firmware in these as they come out with new firmware. It's fairly easy, just hook it, hook it up to your computer with the program and it'll go right to it. So anyway, very nice little feature there. Well, there we go, a quick installation video on putting this uh, new DroPros EL750 digital readout over here on my milling machine. Like I said, this is the third one of these I've got in my shop. This is the first time I've used the EL750 very uh, excited about it and ready to get in here. I do still have, like I said, I need to get these cables uh, mounted up over here and kind of out of the way where they're not all over the floor and just hanging here, but I'll work on that off screen. You guys probably don't want to watch me doing that anyway, and I don't have time to do it right this minute before I get this video out. I also need to get power cord and uh, I'm gonna probably mount an electrical box here on the back of the machine where I can just plug that into and uh, also have power on the machine. It's just going to basically be an extension cord, but uh, I'll put a box on here that will run to that so that we have a place to plug it in as well as anything else we need to plug in over here. Uh, but with that, guys, uh, there you go. That's, uh, you can kind of, I didn't go in every little detail and making all the machining work and the cutting and everything, but you can kind of see how I did my mounts for my hardware. Uh, sometimes you have to be creative with these things. I will say that for just a regular, like a Bridgeport knee mill, the, the kit that comes with the set um, is pretty much set where you can put that on most knee mills. This mill machine is a very different setup. So I had to do some custom brackets and stuff and custom mounting to make this thing work on this machine. Um, like I said, the, the little kits for the mounts were not really designed for this, but the cool thing about having a machine shop is, is that it's pretty easy to make that stuff. And that's just what we did. 
I've got a couple other machines that I would eventually like to get digital readouts on. I would like to get one on my horizontal boring mill. That was going to take some pretty long scales because it's a pretty big machine. And I uh, would even like to get one on my surface grinder back there uh, as well so I can keep track of the height of my, my, my cutter and so forth of the, of the grinder stone. Uh, they've got some of these models that are machine specific for surface grinders as well as lathes, which I've got one on my uh, Monarch 16 inch lathe right now. And who knows, we may put one on the big 21 inch Monarch at some point as well. Uh, so uh, this Drow Pros is not a sponsoring this video. They're not a sponsor of this channel, guys. Uh, I bought this kit 100% totally with my money. Uh, I, you know, I talked to them on the phone. They helped me kind of figure out what I needed for it, but they did not give me any special breaks on this. This is not a paid promotion for uh, this product. My uh, main reason I'm doing this video is because I'm just sharing with you guys how I do stuff in the shop, but uh, I have been a happy customer with the other Drow Pros units that I have in my shop, and I honestly don't have a problem recommending them because like I said, I've had really good luck with it, but I'm not making any money off of these videos, at least not from Drow Pros or anything like that. It is not a sponsored video. Just wanna make that clear. And with that, we're gonna sign off guys. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And guys, as always, big huge thank you to the supporters of the site, support through Patreon, PayPal, etc. That's uh, how I get my, funding to kind of keep things going around here is through your support, through watching these videos, as well as through the, the contributions through Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much for you guys that do that. And uh, with that, we're gonna sign off as always. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.